So I'm watching TV and I hear the, the fucking turtles say, six in the morning, police at my door. No way. But I got paid. What? It, that goes through publishing. I got a little check because I got my publishing back now. I own my publishing, so I got a, a check. There's the business of becoming an artist, and then there's the art business. Never confuse the Tracy Chapman's making how much money on the new cover of Fast Car by Luke Combs? A lot. It originally came out in the 80s back when I was a kid and got three Grammys. The new version of it is actually number one on the country now, chart. According to Billboard magazine, it's about a half million dollars worth of royalties. But Chapman's getting the bulk of it, not Combs. And that's because she's the original writer and also because she owns her publisher. In other words, her masters, in other words, her intellectual property. That's something that MJ, something that Prince, and something that Jay-Z fought years for. And that's something she had back in the 1980s. If art imitates life, you have to have a life. The happiest successful people had a life before and even during building their success. And they end up being successful and happy afterwards. The most miserable people expect success to solely make them happy. And they end up being the saddest. The guy who said to Michael Jackson, you should get into publishing. Some advice, Paul? Yeah. I took, took him aside and said, diddly doodly diddly doodly And think about getting into music publishing. Oh, I'm going to get yours. Well, I went, oh, he's <laughs> sure you on are. the back. Right, right. Good one, you know. Look. And then I just got wrong up. He said, he's got yours. Yesterday's price is not today's price. When you raise your price, and you should, it forces you to add value. And don't give a coupon. Don't drop your price. Don't do two for one. Your thing should be, I'm going to do this price. I'm going to give this value. If you're asking essentially for $10, you should be giving 10x the value, $100. For a million, a million, and my boy said, man, you a millionaire, Steve. Man, let's go out and celebrate. And the bill came, and the bill was like $3,000. <laughs> Woke up the next day, he said, dog, you ain't a millionaire no more. The goal is not to make as much money as possible. The goal is to make as much value as possible. The money comes from the value that you bring into the world. Minimal viable audience is the smallest audience that's the most dedicated. It's almost like it's inversely proportional. If you're trying to go for everybody, then you're gonna be nothing to everybody. Look at those situations. I had a same, similar situation with my pop not being around as well. And then, you know, what cracked the code for me was like, really, like, what was he going through? Perhaps the biggest struggle is for us to be ourselves and by our own example, other people change. Telling them to change usually doesn't work. Plenty of grit is us going through a rough time where we just might have eked our way by and then we made it through and then we see someone else going through it and we tell them it's not a big deal. Listen to Purple Rain even today. It feels as musically relevant today as it was edgy and vanguard back then. I appreciate you saying that. Uh, one of the reasons I think that is is that I never wanted to fit in with my music. Uh, whatever the trend was, I usually went the opposite direction because I wanted to still be here talking to you. Some of my biggest hits happened months, if not years, after they were released. I was getting stuff that was getting panned, bad reviews, not selling the whole thing. And now people are looking at some of my best work. So if you end up waiting for somebody else, especially the crowd, to wait for your approval, you will be waiting a really, really long time. First check that I ever got $50,000. First thing I did was buy my mother a car. I gave my mother like 10 or eight grand or something, and I took the rest. And I just remember all my shit being gone and my mother still having the eight grand. <laughs> Unlike people with traditional jobs, creators like myself, like LL Cool J, most of us do not get steady paychecks. Most do not have a built-in 401k. We do not have a built-in health insurance or paying out of pocket. Everything is based on that one check. Cutter Seth Godin says that if two thirds or two out of every three people that you are in contact with think your idea is too crazy and you've gone too far, that means you're actually impacting the culture. So if most people don't understand what you're trying to do, take it as a sign is that you're just really early to the party. You can actually make a cultural impact. Like you said, you got everything you wanted and you were trying to handle it. What was losing it like? <sighs> Relief. Yeah, it, it happened, it's over. It's now, yeah, now I don't mind, losing's not that bad. Now I'm even a better fighter now because now I'm not afraid to lose. Beginner's luck or uh, the fool coming across amazing things, those aren't coincidences. Those are the times that we're most open to things because we have nothing to lose. In life-threatening situations, it makes you a little more conscious of that. The more that you are aware of your fate, 
the higher the probability you have a chance to live. Everyone I know, everyone that I've coached, everyone that I look up to who made an impact on the world, they all had a sense of urgency. So it could be because you're facing death. It could be because you want to give more life to the world. But if you want to make an impact on things, there needs to be some type of urgency. Why are you doing this now? You know, I was outside trying to make it happen. I, I had my kid. I was forced to to be responsible. Yeah. And, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and um, avoid certain things. When I found out my second son was coming, and I realized as a primary caregiver, because my wife has a traditional job, that I wasn't going to be able to take care of a toddler and a new baby and still be able to provide for my family. That was the leap. That book, The Bite Size Entrepreneur, became a bestseller and started me on this new path, including starting this show. Thing is, is that sometimes life will paint you in a certain corner so you can realize how much power and strength you have. Sometimes you gotta push away the lifeboat and start swimming. Sometimes you successful business people turn down work. Quite often, actually, because it is the clarity of focus, not their busy schedule. It is a novice move to burn bridges or close doors prematurely as your busy season today may turn into a slow churn tomorrow. And done. Uh, Songs that are done that could, that could in fact just... <clears throat> yeah, it's upwards of a thousand, excuse me. Um, I don't like to speculate because it makes me tired. I've done 26 books and for every one book that I've done, I have five or six manuscripts. Some of them are incomplete. Some of them rejected by publishers, by agents. Some of them just weren't working. The thing is, is that for Prince, for myself, for other creators who do a lot, our main focus isn't to have the next hit. Our main focus isn't to make a ton of money. Though there's nothing wrong with either one of those. Our main focus is to create. And creating, to most of us, is as essential as breathing air. Nervous, it means you don't care. Stress is caused by giving. Let me tell you a secret. I've done four TED Talks, dozens, if not hundreds of public speaking appearances. Every single time, I feel it right in my stomach. It is in knots, it feels like it's just twisting up. I can barely eat every single time. If you're actually excited about something, nervous about something, can barely sleep, and it's something that you really care about, welcome to the club. You actually give up. One of my favorite quotes from her book, Rising Strong. If there's one thing I've learned over the past decade, it's that fear and scarcity immediately trigger comparison. And even pain and hurt are not immune to being assessed and ranked. The refugee in, in Syria doesn't benefit more if you can serve your kindness only for her and withhold it from your neighbor who's going through a divorce. Now, if you caught it in there, she calls this comparative suffering. What a powerful concept. That means that my suffering is different than your suffering, and therefore my suffering deserve more sympathy than yours. Like, wow. But we do that all the time. Only the boss if you put up your own money. If you don't put up your own money, I don't care how much somebody gives you, you're nothing but a supervisor. It's not yours. In the financial world, they have a wonderful saying, not your keys, not your cheese.